our next speaker is someone who gave an amazing pre pre presentation um, last October. It's actually Jacob from Dye Star, and you've been finding sort of solutions for cleaner indigo dyeing. So I can't wait to hear your presentation. Of, please take it away, Jacob. Yeah, thanks, Mosin, for the introduction. Hello, everybody. So, um, yeah, first of all, thanks to the Kingpins team, to, to Andrew, for, for inviting me or inviting Dye Star to talk about indigo dye. And it's a big pleasure for us. It's a great show, and um, yeah, thanks for making it possible, uh, the online version. Yeah, I'm uh, Jacob from Diestar, uh, from the Diestar Denim team, and today I will talk about uh, the most important dye for denim, which is indigo. So, um, let's start with the history of the indigo dye. It's probably the most, the, the oldest organic natural dye natural organic dye. It's uh, the findings, the historical findings dated back to 3000 before Christ. Um, there were traces of the indigo dye found in cracks between stones in vetting thrusts. And actually the recent uh, news that I heard is that it's already dated back 4000 before Christ. Um, there were traces of indigo found in cloths in, uh, in pe Peru. So it's approximately 6,000 years old, this dye. The first description of the extraction of indigo uh, is dated back 2000 before Christ. And between the 17th and the 19th century, um, the biggest or the main market of indigo was based on the indigo ferra tinctoria. This is the plant uh, which was produced mainly in India, Southeast Asia, South America. And the important figure to know is that um, this world market was approximately 5,000 tons per year based on this indigo plant. And then, um, 1883, Adolf von Bayer discovered the chemical structure of the indigo dye, which was the, yeah, very historical figure because this was the first or the, the, this, the, the key for the synthetical indigo. So, um, I said that this was uh, end of the 19th century, we had 5,000 tons of uh, natural indigo production per year. A couple of years later, the first technical uh, synthesis was realized of the indigo. And um, this diagram will show you the history of the synthetical indigo by the sales quantity of the BSF, which back then was the only producer of indigo. And later on, Dystar took over this, this uh, indigo business, indigo part. And here are some remarkable uh, dates in the history of the synthetical indigo. One is here in 1913. The production output of 5,000 tons was reached per year which replaced the indigo natural market, the natural indigo market totally. There was almost no natural indigo market anymore. Then unfortunately, first world war came in, second world war came in and the demand for, for indigo broke down. And in the mid of the, uh, the 20th century, this is interesting, uh, the, the indigo market didn't recover really. And the reason for this is that um, the indantrain dyes, the wet dyes, were invented in that time. So there were much more alternatives for blue color. And these dyes had much better fastness properties uh, to cotton compared to indigo. So indigo couldn't recover really or um, write another success story. But later it was um, um, the, the dye for the workwear for the gold miners, which Levi Strauss brought to California. And then Hollywood came into the picture because uh, actors like Marlon Brando, Marilyn Monroe, James Dean, they started to wear denims uh, as a symbol of freedom, as a symbol of nonconformity. And this turned later on to a fashion object, which wrote a huge success story. You can see here the, the sales quantities 
um, of only one company. And today we are talking about a huge world market of more than 70,000 tons. Okay, what is indigo? Indigo is a blue pigment. It is insoluble in water and it has no affinity to cotton. But we want to dye cotton with it. So it requires a chemical reduction process to make it soluble. By this reduction process, the luco indigo is formed, which has a greenish yellowish color. In this form, the indigo is water soluble. It has affinity to cotton. And um, when it's exposed to oxygen, it's oxidizing back to the pigment and it fix and then it has fixation in the cotton fiber. And this luco indigo, which is really crucial for dyeing, can be achieved in two ways. One way is uh, the use of indigo powder in combination with a reducing agent or pre-reduced indigo. These are the two main sources of indigo and two main application technologies for indigo out there. And today I would like to focus on the difference um, of these two technologies and also the difference in the environmental impact of these two um, indigo sources and application technologies. Okay, let's have a look at the indigo powder. Um, the reduction process with, with indigo powder needs a lot of hydrosulfide. This is the reducing agent in uh, the indigo application. It starts with the indigo pigment, which is insoluble in water. In production, it looks like this. The operator needs to handle a lot of plastic bags with the indigo powder inside. Additional, um, a lot of hydrosulfide, or chemically speaking, dithionite is used, and alkaline. All of these chemicals need to be put in the so-called stock vats preparations. It's all mixed together in there. And after the reduction process, the reduced indigo is formed, which is water soluble. But because we need a lot of chemistry for the reduction process, also a lot of sulfides are formed, which at the end, which are salts. From this stock wet preparations, then this solution is pumped into the dye bath, where finally the cotton yarns are dyed in the continuous dyeing process that uh, Miguel has also explained before. It's a really complex dyeing process. And um, there is the indigo finally applied. So if we compare, if we take down now this uh, the resource input into an equation for one kg of indigo, we need addition, uh, we need one kilogram of dithionite and alkaline for the chemical reaction. The output will be one kilogram of reduced indigo, but on the other side, also one kilogram of salts. The reduction process with pre-reduced indigo is completely different. First of all, it starts also with the indigo pigment, um, but it takes place in, the, um, in our case, in our facilities in Ludwigshafen, where we produce our synthetic indigo by ourselves. And um, it doesn't take place anymore at the customer side. So we take the indigo pigment, we use hydrogen and alkaline in a closed system. No need for hydrosulfide and caustic soda for this chemical reaction. No need for the preparation of stock vets at the customer site. At the end, we get uh, the reduced indigo, but the only byproduct is water. And this solution, this pre-reduced indigo, in our case, 40% by weight, is then stored in closed uh, tank containers at our customers or the denim manufacturers. And from there, it's pumped directly into the dye bath. In a closed system by pumps, uh, nobody is touching the product, um, no human handling involved. And all of this reduction process takes place at, uh, at our facilities. And you can see here the picture in the middle of this guy who, who prepares this stock vet. Normally, he should wear a gas mask um, because there is a lot of dust in the air by handling 
this powder chemistry. Um, but in most cases, or in, in many cases, I, I see that they are not aware of it because they are not well trained or they just are not provided by personal safety equipment by their employer, for example. So <clears throat> ah, one important point is that this reduction process doesn't create any salt. I will explain later what it means for the environment. For the human safety and occupational health, this uh, pre-reduced indigo has many advantages. It's a liquid, so it's easier to dose. It's always easier to handle liquids. Um, doesn't matter if it's an indigo or another dye or auxiliaries, it's easier to handle liquids because there is no dust. Um, no empty indigo drums or plastic bags, uh, less hydrosulfide drums for disposal, less soiling of the dye house and the equipment. For me, as an application engineer, this is really important when I'm besides the machine and running the trials. Uh, this is something which I really learn what that means then. And humans are not in contact with the product and there is no dust in the dye house. Um, at the end, the occupational hygiene is completely or totally improved. At that, at that point, I want to encourage every one of you, if you have the chance to visit a denim manufacturer, a dye house, whenever you have the chance, take this chance, have a look inside, uh, go around, um, have a look, how are the dyes prepared? Uh, maybe you get the chance to see a indigo powder application and the previous indigo application. And you can see the difference, um, what it means to the workers on site and ask yourself the question, uh, would I like to work here? Be open for this kind of questions and open your eyes wherever you are. So <laughs> I'd like to show you some figures, interesting figures about the indigo world market. Um, we are talking about approximately 73 or let's say around 70,000 tons of indigo per year that are consumed. Here is the, um, are the main markets <clears throat> and you can see the, the, uh, the cycles with the pre-reduced indigo part and the indigo powder part, the share. Yeah, let's say this is the share of pre-reduced and indigo powder. A more detailed picture, um, I would like to show you the developments of these markets in the period of four years between 2014 and 2018. So the global market, this 70,000 tons um, in, the, in this period of time have developed from 26% pre-reduced indigo share to 33%. It doesn't look so big within four years, but if we exclude China out of this picture, it's a different picture. We had 48% pre-reduced indigo share in 2014, and within four years, it grew to 67%. So outside of China, the mills um, are recognizing more and more the advantages of this technology and uh, increase the, uh, we have in, increased um, market shares here. Not only Dystar, also our competitors. And if we only take a look at, at China, we see that in these four years, there was no change towards this advanced technology. Important to mention here is that half of the market size or the demand is in China. This is quite interesting because China is the, if you, uh, totally the, the biggest producer of denims. And at the same time, they apply the, yeah, the conventional method with indigo powder. <laughs> okay. Um, we wanted to see the environmental impact. If we compare these two technologies, what is the, actually the impact on the environment? And um, together with a customer, uh, we had a customer in, uh, uh, who, de who decided to switch from indigo powder application to pre-reduced. And so we, we had also the target to prove the environmental impact on the, on the effluent. And what we did in this case, you can see in this uh, diagram on the left side, this is um, the, the, the values of the three critical parameters. 
in that case. This is TSS, total suspended solids, COD, chemical oxygen demand, and the sulfates, which easy, um, yeah, in easier words, salts. And on the left side, this were the, uh, the point where the machine was running utilized by indigo powder. Then we just changed the source from indigo powder feeding to pre-reduced indigo feeding into the running dyeing process. And we continuously measured these critical values. So started with the values um, from indigo powder, ended up after a long trial of 60,000 liters of continuous production, the TSS were reduced by 93%, the COD was reduced by 69%, and the sulfates were reduced by 42%. And this was um, a very important figure because in the calculation, when switching from indigo powder to previous indigo, um, a lot of dye house, they don't take in account, okay, what, what is the cost saving on the effluent side, just on the resource input side. Yeah, so if I don't need, I need less hydrosulfide, okay, this is the cost savings. But here we had huge cost savings on the effluent side, which can be transferred to hard facts as well. Um, another view I'd like to show you is the potential that we have in the global resource savings when we compare these two technologies. More or less, um, 49,000 tons of indigo are still applied as an indigo powder. To make it ready to dye and to allow the dyeing process to be stable, we need approximately 58,000 tons for this amount of indigo to make it um, applicable. And roughly 91,000 tons of hydrosulfide. This is the chemical requirement for the 49,000 tons of indigo powder dyeing. By changing, if we imagine to change this 49,000 tons indigo powder application to pre-reduced due to better process performance, 4,000 tons of indigo could be saved. Um, the reduction process doesn't take place at the dye house anymore. It's reduced by hydrogen in, the, in our um, facilities. So 29,000 tons of caustic could be saved. And the most important thing is that up to 59,000 tons of sodium hydrosulfide could be saved. And this actually is the issue that we have in the indigo dyeing process. This huge amounts of salt that are produced. And we don't need the salt for the application, it's just a side product. As you see here, nevertheless, around one third of the sodium hydrosulfide is still used also in the advanced process with pre-reduced indigo. So our answer to this was how we can, or the question was how we can remove this remaining salts or hydrosulfide out of the process. So we developed the Kadira Denon process, and this is a technology which completely eliminates hydrosulfide. Hydrosulfide is the problem because it's responsible for the salt formation during the dyeing process. And um, we have developed an alternative organic reducing agent that is not forming salts after the dyeing process. So the problem here is that still more than 65,000 tons of reducing agent is still used in indigo dyeing per year. And after the application, this 65,000 tons end up as a salt. And this is contaminating the wastewater effluent. And finally, this salt needs to be landfilled. You cannot burn it. You cannot chemically degrade it. You have to landfill it. There is no way. And this is really a strong waste and effluent topic which we have in the indigo dyeing process. Not only in indigo dyeing, salt is also a big issue in uh, reactive dyes, for example. And on this Kadira denim, um, one customer of ours, he did an independent case study um, because he wanted to show the environmental impact of this cardiogen technology in the effluent treatment plant. He wanted to prove it for himself. So the results show uh, what he did, he, he checked, he compared these three dyeing technologies um, with indigo powder, with pre-reduced indigo and hydrosulfide, 
and Cardira denim, which is using pre-reduced indigo and the new organic reducing agent. And he compared the effluent values of the three tri uh, critical parameters. And um, the sulfides and sulfides, which are responsible for the salt formation in the dyeing process, were reduced by 98%. The COD was reduced by 88%. And the total dissolved solids were reduced by 93%. So this uh, customer case study proved that Cadira Denin from the application site in indigo dyeing is the best available technology at present because it completely eliminates the salt from this dyeing process and improves the environmental impact. Okay, besides that, just uh, this is the last slide. Um, we are not only trying to, to provide our customers or the industry with the best solutions from the chemical side. We look at the entire dyeing process, um, which is quite complex. And we are working together with machinery partners to um, improve or to make this dyeing process easier, better, and more environmental friendly. And for example, we have a project with, um, for, with a supplier for microfiltration units with the target to um, completely filter out the indigo from the rinsing boxes from an indigo dyeing machine, reuse 100% of the indigo in dyeing, of the unfixed indigo in the rinsing boxes, and reuse this filtered water in the rinsing process. And on the other hand, we work together with a company called Rota Spray, which um, is a, a development with spray dyeing technology, which we apply in the slasher dyeing machines, indigo dyeing machines, with the target to, with one target to um, remove this uh, or to overcome this big dyeing boxes in the indigo dyeing machine when it comes to indigo application, because it's a forced application, no dipping, no squeezing, you just spray like, you, you're, like you're painting the walls, you know? So you just spray on what you need. This is the, the, um, the background here. And the second target is to make this dyeing machines much more flexible um, in the application of dyes besides indigo, which is not so easy in indigo dyeing machines. So especially for reactive dyes, for wet dyes, and the combination of, of, of dyes. So we are working also with machinery partners to make the indigo dyeing process better, easier, more sustainable. Okay, that's it from my side. <laughs> are you muted, Mosen? You are muted. Sorry, super, <laughs> Jacob. Thank you so much. Um, unbelievable. I think you're probably the most popular so far. We've had six questions, so let's r rattle on and ask them. We've got about five minutes, so let's try and do this quickly. Okay. Are there any types of dye that you do that 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 do not require a reduction process at all? I know that foam dyeing is a recent recent development, but there's indigo dye still used. Well, no. Yes. Anyway, it's more. Yeah. Anyway, question number one. Um, is, uh, the question is, do we talk about indigo? Because indigo always requires a reduction process. And, um, but for the, for the indigo dyeing machines, yes, there are other dyes that can be applied, but it's not so easy because this, this dyeing machines are uh, specifically designed for the indigo dye. And if you want to apply another dye, you have some challenges, but yes, it's possible. Okay, Reactive uh, dyes, for example. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, good, good, good. A quick second question is from our friend Claire Ford. Um, I would like to know more about natural indigo Ferrero versus synthetic indigo in regards to in regards to sustainability and wearing it on our skin all all day. There are many statistics comparing synthetic to natural indigo. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's more of a yeah. Anyway, anything yeah. you want to add there? I remember we had a similar question Very in, similar, in October. Yeah. In October, and um, the uh, uh, natural indigo. Um, the market is very low. It's a niche product yeah. now. And um, if you want to, go to, to cover the, the world demand with natural indigo. It's not sustainable. It's not <laughs> sustainable anymore. <laughs> we, we wouldn't grow corn anymore, probably, or other yeah. things. Um, but we had to grow a lot of indigo plants. Because yeah, you need and a football it, field to make a small cake, don't you? So uh, Exactly. Um, one kilogram of biomass 
of the indigo plant, you will get only 2% of indigo out of it. Wow. So you need a lot of biomass to create a couple so of grams of indigo. For smaller brands like Outland that she consults for, it's probably viable, but for a bigger company, fast fashion company, it's just not really sustainable. It's just the, 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 the like, demand will be just too much for yes, doing Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and um, wearing it on the skin was also uh, mm. one, one part of the question. Um, there were a couple of articles also by Ecotextile about this and this aniline topic. And yeah. um, so if you compare natural indigo to synthetic indigo, um, what we know now is that there is no uh, threat for our skin or for mm. us if we, if we were synthetic indigo or if synthetic indigo was applied. Yeah. And you know, we have all the standards like Ecotex and so on. Yeah, because it's, it's the biggest um, organ, isn't it? Our skin, it absorbs everything. So I guess yes. it's becoming quite current because of the climate that we're in. People are a bit more conscious about all these synthetic petrochemical dyes. And obviously you guys are doing a very good job trying to reduce all the salt and trying to, you know, even your like sort of like sort of your new denim sort of like sort of sort of like sort of, sort of, sort of like sort of like the things yeah. in my, my whole WhatsApp group's been going crazy about your talk. Anyway, for a couple more <laughs> questions. Why is China not, not, not adopting pre, pre, pre-reduced? That's the question from Laura Dixon. Um, one answer from, from me personally would be that most of the synthetic indigo which is produced on the world is coming from China. Right. The indigo powder. So this is the biggest supplier of synthetic indigo powder. And they have um, good prices. They have good relationships. Uh, yeah, That's I think this, this could be a reason. But in, in the last years, these figures were uh, ended, I think, 2018. And mm-hmm. I, I see that the last two years, there was a, I see more customers in China applying pre-reduced indigo okay. in, the, um, in the recent years. Uh, what is aniline used in your process if it's not caustic soda? Ah, um, we use, uh, for, for the reduction process, we use hydrogen. Mm-hmm. And there is also, yes, there, there is alkaline environment, but we use hydrogen. And hydrogen reduces the indigo pigment to the water-soluble form, to the lucro indigo. A uh, question from the L- London College of Fashion student from Rose: What, what are the, uh, what are your like Philip f- f- uh, facilities? The chemi- chemical you you use is like cons- is like considerably less y- using in your process. But what are what is your carbon f- footprint? Well, a lot a lot of questions. And transportation <laughs> of garments, facilities, source. Do you know this data? I think it's just more of a data question. Uh, we, yes, we have all this data in our sustainability report, which is available on the Dysta homepage. And nice. our facility is in Ludwigshafen in Germany. This is mm-hmm. the, the, yeah, maybe from, the histor- do, from the history. There's three more questions. I don't think we can answer them all now. But what you can do is maybe, Jacob, you can go on and on the Q&A, you can type in some answers as well. Yes, but of course. Thank you so much for your time, Jacob. You're, again, thank you, again, I really enjoy lis- li- listening to you. And thank you for giving up your time, especially you're at home. Uh, thank you so, so much. Um, 